Άνετο, χαμογελαστό και έτοιμο να απαντήσει σε όλα τα ερωτήματα, ο Ρόπερτ Μενέντε εμφανίζεται για να δώσει μια αποκλειστική συνέντευξη στον Αλφα Κύπρου. Στο πλαίσιο τη βαρισήμαντη επίσκεψή του στην Κύπρο, μιλά ανοιχτά και δίνει ουσιαστικέ απαντήσει σε κρίσιμα ερωτήματα. Χωρί να μασά τα λόγια του, βάζει στο κάδρο του βασικού παίκτε τη διεθνού κοινότητα. Next year marks half a century since the Turkish invasion and occupation of Cyprus. How the civilized and free world tolerated such illegality for so long? It is really uh, uh, not acceptable to have uh, a coming up on a half century of invasion and occupation. And while the European Union and the United Nations and the United States has condemned it, uh, we have done uh, not enough to uh, end it. Um, and so uh, I think that the, um, the answer is uh, how do we uh, reassert uh, leadership in order to bring a conclusion to the invasion and occupation. We see the international mobilization for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. However, we did not see anything similar for Cyprus. Why? The world was at a different place at that point in time. Um, we had a set of circumstances in which Turkey was seen in a different light at the time, as the potential bridge between East and West, as uh, a more secular government, as one that would be uh, a NATO ally that would be responsible. Unfortunately, under Erdogan, that has proven not to be true. Um, and uh, the reality is, is that it was a mistake not to have mobilized uh, to end uh, the invasion and then the subsequent occupation. Do you think that American policy in Cyprus issue today is different from that of uh, 1974 and the years that followed? Well, I do think that the politics uh, are different. Um, much uh, has changed as a result of the um, Cypriot diaspora abroad, particularly in the United States, who have advocated uh, for a stronger relationship between the United States and Cyprus and have achieved a stronger relationship. The question is, uh, can we now move from a strong relationship to one that seeks a resolution uh, of the invasion and occupation? And that's what I hope to be able to advocate for uh, in the United States. Now I want to comment, Mr. Menendez, from you about all these illegal actions that took place in the buffer zone last week. Turkey is not new to violating Security Council resolutions. No, it is not new. It, it violated Security Council resolutions when it spoke about uh, repopulating Varosha. That is in violation of Security Council resolutions. Uh, and what happened in Playa uh, is very clear. The assault on UN peacekeepers, uh, the forcible movement of UN vehicles, the attempt uh, to try to build out in part of the internationally recognized green zone, the buffer zone, is nothing less than a violation of international law. And it, sh so it should be so called, it should be condemned by the United Nations. And uh, I hope that the Secretary General of the United Nations uh, will appoint uh, a special envoy to try to regain momentum uh, in an ultimate resolution of the division of the country. Mr. Menendez, what message are you conveying following this provocative and unlawful actions? In the first instance, calling it uh, what it is, a violation of international law and condemning it as such. Uh, secondly, to making very clear that such violations uh, cannot happen without consequence. Ο Αμερικανός γερουσιαστής βάζει σε πρώτο πλάνο τη Μόσχα, αναγνωρίζοντας την πλέον ως ένα εμπόδιο στο Κυπριακό που κάνει πλάτες στον Τούρκο Πρόεδρο. Of course we have challenges at the United Nations because uh, in uh, the UN Security Council, uh, our allies uh, of Turkey like Russia have a veto. Uh, and uh, we have seen uh, uh, Erdogan get closer and closer to Putin. Uh, and uh, often uh, having meetings with him. He uses that as a buffer to his uh, interests and actions. Uh, but 
while that may stop because of a veto of Russia at the United Nations, it should not stop the rest of the world from thinking about how they respond to violations of Turkey. Uh, and uh, I will simply say, uh, yes, uh, Turkey is a NATO ally, and I think that's why some uh, countries don't want to impose sanctions on Turkey. But if Turkey, under Erdogan, can continue to act the way he acts without consequence, then you will expect, you can expect him to continue on the same path. And what must be done for the international community to move beyond words and take concrete actions? Security Council, I would hope that they would seek a condemnation, not only what happened in Pila, uh, but also uh, about the continuing occupation. We will have a challenge at the Security Council because of Russia's veto. Um, I think that uh, uh, we have to begin to recognize, as certainly I do and have said for some time, uh, that uh, condemnation, of course, is appropriate when, when a country acts in violation of international law, but it must be more than condemnation in order for there to be a end to the actions uh, which violate international law. And so uh, I have advocated for a stronger, more robust response to Erdogan. Uh, obviously, uh, because he bought uh, the S-300s, uh, uh, we ended up uh, stopping the F-35 program uh, to Turkey. Um, I have been holding up the possibility of sales of F-16s to Turkey because of a variety of actions, including not allowing Sweden to be part Όντα ένα από του μεγαλύτερου ελληνικού πολιτικού στι Ηνωμένε Πολιτείε, βάζει του πυλώνε για ενίσχυση των διμερών σχέσεων Κύπρου και Αμερική. We have been building our relationship in a stronger way. We just had one of the most extensive military exercises here in Cyprus with the United States. We are building a coalition of the Eastern Mediterranean between Greece, Cyprus, country of Israel and the United States, 3 plus 1. I hope uh, to advocate for Cyprus to be part of the visa waiver program, uh, which I think would be a further integration into our two countries. I would like to uh, not just have an a annual extension uh, of uh, relief from the arms embargo, I would like to permanently end the arms embargo. Uh, and then that will give Cyprus the opportunity to decide in its own sovereign right how it best defends itself from any potential aggression. I would call upon President Biden, uh, who has a long history with Cyprus from his days as a United States Senator and as the former chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, a position that I presently hold, he was very close to the Cyprus issue. He had a great deal of appreciation and admiration of the Cypriot people. He understood uh, the, the illegality of invasion and occupation. And so while the world has been engrossed with the challenges of Ukraine uh, and Russia, which is also about uh, an international proposition to not just to help the Ukrainians for their freedom, but to set a very well-defined international standard that you cannot by force take another country's territory, which would be very appropriate in the case of Cyprus. How can Turkey and Recep Tayyip Erdogan's behavior be addressed in order to compel them to cease these illegal activities? Well, the only way that you will uh, compel Erdogan to do something uh, is either by incentives or consequences. I don't know what incentives we could uh, offer uh, to Turkey to change under Erdogan, to change its posture. It seems to me that consequences are more appropriate. What can those consequences be? Um, they can be economic sanctions. Uh, they can be uh, a continuing barrage of international condemnations. Um, uh, a recalibration uh, of uh, Turkey's role uh, in terms of the security paradigm of the region. Uh, those are some of the things that can be considered. But it will take, yes, the United States, but it will also take the European Union. And in this respect, I have not seen the European Union be as forward-leaning as it should about a fellow member country. Cyprus is a member of the European Union.
but it's difficult. It's, it's difficult. First of all, it's not for the United States to tell the European Union what to do. At this time, there is a global fight in Ukraine to preserve the international proposition that you cannot by force take another country's territory. Well, why allow it to continue to happen in Cyprus to a fellow member of the European Union? Is it realistic for Cypriot citizens to hope for a resolution of Cyprus issue based on the arcade framework of the United Nations resolutions? Well, the United Nations resolutions give us an international uh, framework under which uh, the Cyprus question can be resolved, which is a bi-zonal, uh, bi-communal uh, federation. Uh, that allows uh, uh, Turkish Cypriots, not those who have been brought from Anatolia, but Turkish Cypriots, those who have a long history in the country, and Greek Cypriots, to come together for a conclusion to live in peace and security and prosperity. I have always believed that if Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots uh, were given the opportunity to be the ones to negotiate with each other, that we would have a resolution of this problem. Of course, the influence of uh, Turkey under Erdogan has not allowed that to happen. We need to break that stranglehold. The improvement in Greek and Turkish relations uh, in Vilnius could provide hope for the resolution of the Cyprus issue or not? The recent calm in the Aegean uh, with Turkey not having the overflights of uh, Greek airspace, of not uh, having ships go into Greek territorial waters, of the rhetoric dramatically having been lowered is a welcomed, is a welcomed uh, uh, set of circumstances. The question is, is it temporary or permanent? Uh, if it's permanent, it can be something that can be built upon. And a better relationship between uh, Greece and Turkey Mr. Menendez, why do you love Cyprus so much? Uh, I have seen uh, the beauty of the country and its people. Um, I have been uh, from, uh, of course, the capital city of Nicosia, to Trodos Mountains, to Kikos Monastery, uh, to uh, Kukla Village, where refugees first came, uh, and, uh, and so much more. Uh, but as someone whose family fled from oppression to come to the United States, I understand what oppression is. I understand when someone has to uproot themselves and leave what was their home uh, to come to a place to be free. And so I have that sense uh, of uh, relationship with the Cypriot people, and uh, I will continue to advocate uh, for a, a future that brings us peace, prosperity, and reunification.